Welcome back to the shop. I've got Paul Shin, the Mafali guy with me, and we're going to work on Gandalf today. He is going to be doing a video pretty quick here on how to replace the uh, radiator. radiator, right? Yes. Yeah, it went kapooey. Well, it's partly my fault. It was uh -oh. a self-inflicted wound. <laughs> <laughs> Explain more, please. I'd rather or not. Or do you want to save it for your video? I'm not going to tell anybody what I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'm going to take the opportunity today because I've had other people in my videos ask, how do you drain the radiator fluid mm -hmm. and put it back in and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go about that today in two ways. I'm going to go with a splash pan and show an example on that. And then we're going to do it as if you had no splash pan, which I'm told there is a lot of people who took theirs off because yeah. we just don't have those dirty dirt muddy roads anymore like we well, used to we're not driving through two feet of mud so yeah yeah a lot of people leave them off because they you know they break the vibration tends to break the ears off and then rather than replace them they just leave them off because it's not that big a deal so hmm. a lot of model A's running around without them right. there's a couple that have them this still has them off naked so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna show you two ways not one, but two. Two! <laughs> so for those of you who are new to the Model A, whether you have it uh, given to you from grandparents or you just purchased your very own just because you're in love with them, this is what this is all about. If you ever wondered what a splash pan looks like, this is what they look like. There are two of them. Woo! That's with the back. It's tapered. That's the front. Oh. <laughs> that's true. That's the front. That's well, the back. technically, yeah. this is the front, that's the front. Yeah. and this is the back. Yeah. That's the driver's side. Faces the back side. Yeah. So, so it goes from the radiator and drains this way. All right. And I have the driver's side, and you'll know because here's the little bolts that go on the edge on the outer side. Those bolt to the frame. They have belts to the frame. And the tabs over there goes on the oil pan. Yep. And then he has the passenger side. It's got the cutout for the muffler right there. <laughs> Another thing that you'll need. I've got these blue, greeny, jobby bed blue pants. things. Oh. <laughs> bed pants. Yeah. Oh, dream pants. No, that's only for when we're sick. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you'll need either something like this, something that holds at least a gallon or two of fluids, because when you empty them they get about like what three gallons two and a half three gallons somewhere yeah. in there of coolant in the system yeah so i've got about three of these just in case it's but the good news is this radiator leaks so there isn't yeah. two and a half or three gallons in there in fact we may have to add a little water to the radiator just to, to flow demonstrate yeah. because we need to replace the radiator yeah thanks to whatever you've done nothing nothing happened taking to your grave nothing happened <laughs> So while Paul is putting away those pans, I'm going to show you what they look like underneath the Model A. All right, we're going down. On the driver's side here. That is the splash pan right there. There's the end of it. Goes up and goes to the front of the vehicle where it's tapered. So from the engine area, you can see it right here, this whole metal piece. That's where it drips down to and goes out. There's the front of it. Here is the pet cock, which is flat right now, right there. And then you just turn it so that's long ways and that will empty the radiator juices out. And here is a pet cock that has not been opened yet. Pretty cool looking. Brand new. The way the radiator works is it goes from the bottom of the radiator through these tubes. We have a little custom shiny stainless steel one. It usually is black. Goes through here into the engine, through the water jackets, goes through the water pump, goes up through here, back up to the top of the radiator, and goes through the little what, radiator tubings in there. This is a three core one. The way the coolant cools off is by going through these little fins with the air. And on the inside, you'll see there is a fan right there. All that goes together, it cools down the coolant as it's going down through those three tubes and goes down, back down through here and goes right back through those tubes all over again. So of course the coolant's the hottest when it enters up here. 
it starts getting cooled down as it goes through the fins. Then by the time it gets down to the very bottom, it's at its coolest and it goes right back through the whole system. So now that you've learned a little bit about how a radiator works and where the pans are, we're gonna empty some fluids. So now it's time to get one of your pans or whatever you're gonna collect the fluid with. I'm gonna take it under the car. We're gonna start on the driver's side here. We're gonna put it right under so it can collect it. Yeah, it looks about lined up there. My lovely assistant is putting fluid in there so that way I have something to let out. Oh, <laughs> thank God it's only water. <laughs> oh, okay, it's full. It didn't take much, so it was just low. It wasn't empty. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then we're going to go here to our little knob here. Pit cook and turn it if I can turn it. Holy mackerel, that's stiff. Oh, here. Yep, I need a tool. All right, I've got a tool. And it does not matter which way you turn it, no matter what, as long as it just goes straight up and down. You can see it's starting to flow out. And it's going right into the bucket. It's just that simple. You figure you're down, so you're getting full now. You're gonna put that back flat. And it stops. Working on a Model A is really that simple. Most of the time. So right now there's just water in the radiator that we're draining out. There's no coolant at this point. We will be putting coolant when we restore the radiator, the new one. But let's say you just had to replace something and you just wanted to drain the coolant to fix something. You can use that coolant over again. That is if it's clean coolant. Not roadie looking like that rusty water. So at this point, it's kind of getting towards the top a little bit. So I'm going to take that petcock and turn it sideways again so it's flat. That'll give me a chance to take that bucket out and put a brand new one. All right. An inch and a half maybe left of room to catch it, but it's don't want to make a huge mess spill it. It looks like broth. <laughs> Yum. Yikes, yeah. Mm, go heat that up right now. It's good, good eating. <laughs> Want me to taste it? <laughs> yeah. Don't be a Derek. Don't taste things. I gotta kiss you with that mouth. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Number two. There you go. Thanks, dude. It'll just rest. Yeah, just rest. Yeah. Not today's choice of broth. So at this point, I should be able to turn the pet cock on my own now that I've been using my little tool there, maybe. My fingers really are that weak. Uh-oh, girly fingers. So that really does help to use it. For me, anyways. There she blows. Good. Buckets under it. Good. All right, we're gonna keep draining. <laughs> you know, after listening to that a little bit, I think I've got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. All right, I turned off the water again. Take out number two here. Not quite as gross as a number two, but and it must have been fuller than we realized because it is gonna take another bucket, number three to get the remainder part of the water out. On with the petcock. I wonder who gave it that name. Hey, so Paul. Yo. Got a thing for you to tell people for me. Okay. I know you were telling me all about how in the 30s and whatnot, when these were brand new, some people sometimes couldn't afford antifreeze, so they just use water. Yeah. How could they get away with that? Uh, well, that's what Ford put that little thing right there for. So the idea was if you lived in an area where it would freeze, when you weren't driving the car, like when you got out, let's say you drove home from work and you know it was going to be cold that night, you shut the car off, you get out, you open that up, and it starts draining the water out, and then just go in the house, 
have your night, whatever. Yeah. The next morning you'd come out, you'd close that, pour water in it, and drive to work. Hmm. Yeah, because if you leave just plain water in these and it freezes, it'll crack the block or the head, usually the head. Okay, so they can be run without coolant in it. It can go straight water and it doesn't hurt yeah. anything? Mm, I'm not going to say it doesn't hurt anything, but <laughs> it doesn't really, it's not that big a deal. Okay. No. But these days we run 50-50 uh, antifreeze just because uh, we don't want the inside of the block cast iron rusting any more than it already has. True. And I don't like having to drain my radiator constantly or even think about it. So uh, I just run 50-50 antifreeze in all of our Model A's and then we don't have any trouble with them. Nice. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. Well, hopefully it's almost done. It's definitely a lot fuller than I thought it was. We're working on the third one right here. It's getting close to the point where I was dumping the other two. Been trying to keep the micro cats away from the car because they're trying to drink this disgusting water. Where did he go? Oh, they're over here on the chair. Micro cats. Well, hopefully we're getting to an end here. It's starting to get more rustier and more disgusting looking. So hopefully that means we're nearing the bottom. At least it's not in the motor anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's sucky to think that's going in the motor, that's for sure. What you got there? Screw. I figure if this thing starts to get plugged up, I'm just get a appropriate size screw, stick it in there, clean it out, and then it flows again. Oh, nice. Yeah, your fingers look like this. Mm, yummy. Oh, it's getting less and less. I think we we're just down to small little drips. Yes. Now it's time for Paul to get to work. He's got to yank this radiator out of here. So Paul, I'm going to leave this car in your hands now. Yay. So remember in the beginning, I said there was two pans. There you can see them. There's the one that I've been using to empty the radiator and Here's the other pan. It's only used to block the gunk and junk from getting to the motor. So not used to drain anything. So it's time to go to the coop. It does not have splash pans. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration on how to drain the fluids for the coolant underneath here when there's nothing going on, it's naked. So brand new information. Paul got in his timing tools again. So he'll be finding ways of giving them away very soon. Ooh, stay tuned. Look, I got rash teeth. And this is the inside of the coupe's engine. As you can see, we can just see floor. There's no pan through here to collect. And there is the petcock that will be turning, which means the uh, nozzle for it is right underneath. I'll show you from below also. We ran out of gallon water jugs to pour it into, so I'm just going to use this empty coolant can, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. There is the pet cock right there, the lever, and under here, you can see there's a little dot of coolant right there on the bottom of it, and that's where it comes from. With that hole there. You got a funnel? I do. Can I use it? Hey, that'll work. That'll work. Thanks, homie. There you go. Okay, so I'm trying not to make a big mess when I do it. So I've got the red funnel there directly under the pet cock. Oh my god, I thought I heard one of you jump in there. Okay, cat, out of the motor. Going down here, get to the pet cock without bumping my little contraption over. Got this one's a little stiffer, but here we go. There you go, pet cock open. It is draining successfully without getting all over the floor. And that's really as simple as that is when you don't have the pan under it. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off because all I'm doing is giving you a demonstration we're not going to empty today. We're just kind of learning and off it goes. And now what I'll do is I'll just take that coolant that I poured in there and get it right back into the radiator so we can continue to use it in there. So I'm going to put the coolant back into the radiator because, well, it needs a little bit more. As you can see down into the hole there, that's what it looks like. It's not as full as it should be in the first place. So we're going to add some more into it. We're going to hold that with one hand. I'm going to kind of use the other hand to kind of peek around it. That way you can see 
when it's starting to get too full. You don't want it to go above the baffle. You kind of peek a little bit here. And right when it starts resting on top of it is when you know when to stop. You don't want to go all the way to the top, that's for sure. Oop, that's all I got in there. Let's see where that left us. We've got, well, it could be a little fuller, but, oh, maybe it is resting now. Yeah, okay, I thought it was just resting on the top, but no, it's actually to where we want it. So that's what you want it to look like. And that's when you know you have a full radiator. That way when it gets too hot or whatever expands, has enough room to expand without going all over the place. So hopefully that taught you enough and taught you how to do your radiator with confidence and we'll call it a wrap. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and I'll see you next week. Love you guys.